Hey, music theory community, here's a video that I've set up discussing good practices in Species Counterpoint 3. Uh, species Counterpoint 3 is where you're given a whole note texture and you compose in quarter notes above it. You can begin the exercise, as is customary, with a quarter rest and three quarter notes. That creates for plenty of independence. You hear one part come in and then the other part enters. But you have to, begin the, you have to end the exercise on a whole note. In Species Counterpoint 3, you are permitted to use the dissonance for the very first time. Dissonant intervals in Species Counterpoint are the second, the fourth, and the seventh. The ninth is synonymous with the second. You can only use the dissonant intervals on beats 2, 3, and 4, not on beat 1. Beat 1 needs to remain a consonant interval every downbeat, every step of the way. Again, it's best to use sixths, thirds, and tenths on downbeats rather than fives and eights. Fives and eights are hollower intervals. They lack overtones, and they're not as rich as your sixth, your tenth, and your, your third. Okay? The exercise, of course, needs to end on an octave or a unison. You should not have unisons on downbeats, just as you shouldn't have octaves. But you can have unisons on seconds, second beats, thirds, and fourth beats. Okay, let's take a look at this exercise and seeing some, see some of the techniques that are coming out in Species Counterpoint 3. Okay, going back to the dissonance, the dissonance can be used in passing, as is in this case. Start on a third, ascend to the dissonant fourth, and then complete the rise, the stepwise rise to a consonant interval. Or, as in this case, where I'm using the double neighbor figure, I start on a consonant interval, ascend to the seventh, and then skip down only a third, and then fill in with the B. So the first and the last note will be the same. This is your double neighbor figure. Here's another double neighbor figure. Start on a sixth, ascend to, to, the, to the seventh, jump down to the fifth, complete, fill in, and then rise again. The dissonant jump is in the middle between notes two and three. Again, these numbers we all know pertain to the distance from the lower note to the top notes. Okay, let's go back and listen again. So I'm, I'm trying to create motion downwards to um, draw an eventual need for a rise upward. In Species Counterpoint 3, you're offered so many more notes, and I need to really say something rather than just noodle. Um, in the beginning, I am using a limited range, but I'm really not noodling because if you, if you notice, my downbeats are always different notes. Downbeat A, E, D, E. So this is your lower neighbor to your E. What you have to be careful with is not to repeat the same notes on downbeats. Also, I'm creating variety here. I have motion up, a skip down, then I have a bigger skip of a fourth here, then I have a lower neighbor figure, I have a small skip of a third over the bar line, try to avoid big skips over the bar line, and then I have a lower neighbor figure here. So there's variety here, even though it's very similar in, in range. So you will want to avoid repeating patterns. And here I didn't. Ascending, descending. Skipping up a fourth, lower neighbor. Skip down, lower neighbor. Let's go back to the beginning. What you're noticing in this example is that there is tension as the line is progressing. Your goal in your melody, in your counterpoint, is to reach scale degree 5, which will have utmost tension. And here, in the key of A minor, here is scale degree 5, an E. And what I'm outlining here using Schenkerian analysis is that there is a stepwise ascent to the dominant, scale degree 1, scale degree 2 on a downbeat, 3 on a downbeat, scale degree 4, completion of the rising line, return to the tonic. 
If you're going to skip a third, as in these cases, you don't have to fill in. But if you skip more than a third, as in this case, it's a fourth, then you should change direction. So reviewing, you should build a general goal to the fifth scale degree in your music, but approach it by step on downbeats, preferably. Here, I have motion downward, but again, I'm not repeating any of these tones. Uh, and there's that E, D, E, and I'm, notice how I don't repeat the E here. So what I, what I liked in this example is that this E can carry over, kind of like in your, in your ear, and it really, in its dominant har harmony, it's your tense area. So I left off with the sound of, of scale degree five lingering here as I ascended, and then it gets completion here. Uh, even though I have a descent here, there really is a connection this way. So I'm not really generating two melodies, but there's a motion down, but the opening was still, is still in this range. So it's, it's, it's still a unified melody. Going back to the beginning. the ending of the exercise in minor you need to use your melodic minor scale so you need to raise the leading tone at the end and if you do sc use scale degree six right before the leading tone it needs to be raised as well G sharp F sharp in the key of a minor raising the leading tone means using the G sharp and raising scale degree six means using the F sharp during the middle of the exercise you don't use the leading tone and you don't raise six everything appears as in the natural minor form Okay, Music Theory Committee, thanks for your time. Um, hope this helped clarify some good practices in Species Counterpoint 3. And you're offered more notes and have to say much more without being repetitive. Looking forward to hearing your input and putting up more videos. Take care.